it is standard procedure. If you saw the pictures of them being wheeled into the, the courtroom, literally wheeled into the courtroom, unconscious in one case, uh, one person with an ear missing, we saw the, the Russian security forces post footage how they sliced it off when detaining him and shoved it in his mouth, another with an eye missing, one with the plastic bag still around his neck, which we hear from Sean Pinner, the, uh, the British citizen who has been through these torture techniques when captured in Ukraine, is a standard method of not only moving people from one place to another, plastic bag over the head, but also turning on and off the torture whenever you can. It's just Russia's standard practice. And would you expect then I don't know, the, the formalization of the use of the death penalty for, for terrorists? Is that just not the logical extension of this, this, uh, this, this travel, this journey? Potentially. But then, of course, when you use the lo word logical about uh, what Russia is doing, you always have to take it with a certain pinch of salt. This doesn't necessarily mean that the law will be amended, but then the law has always been flexible for what the Russian authorities actually want to do. Certainly, it's giving the excuse for a crackdown on a whole range of people whom Russia traditionally doesn't like. But it's also, of course, spurring calls for revenge from Islamic State. We've already seen the threats that there will be further terror attacks as a response to what has been done to these people who may or may not have had anything to do with this attack. And of course, what it has shown is that Russia is wide open for this kind of terror attack. There seem to be no protection in place for, for large concert venues like Kroka City Hall, despite the fact that there was a police station actually inside the building complex. Vladimir Putin is confirming that those accused of the Moscow concert hall attacks were radical Islamists. More than 130 people were killed in that attack on Friday. Three out of four suspects pleaded guilty to terror offences. Now some Russian officials are calling for the reintroduction of capital punishment for terrorists. We can talk to Keir Giles, who's a senior consulting fellow of the Russia and Eurasia programme at Chatham House. Welcome to you, Keir. Hello, good evening. So what do you first of all make of Vladimir Putin acknowledging, accepting that we're talking about radical Islamists when it comes to the Moscow attack? Well, of course, there's a nuance to this, as there always is. This isn't a, a sudden turnaround from blaming Ukraine. It comes with the question, well, who put them up to it? And in a way, this mirrors what we've been hearing from Russia's propagandists and disinformation mongers, including some of the trolls on social media, trying to pin it on Ukraine, even though the evidence was mounting, including Islamic State's own admissions and release of body cam footage that was nothing to do with them. So how do they spin this? They say, well, it was the United States that, spun, uh, that set up Islamic State in the first place, so yes. plainly there to blame. So we won't see, I think, any reduction in the volume of the Kremlin accusations against Ukraine, because after all, that's what they can use to spin up the war fervor in Russia even further and potentially use it as excuses for uh, for further um, war measures that will actually hurt the Russian population themselves, like, for example, dragooning more people into the armed forces. And they will then continue to do that, to use this, this opportunity to use the word opportunity, to just keep up the propaganda effort when it comes to Ukraine. Does that tell us anything that we don't know? Is, is it a mark of Putin's obsession with the Ukraine war? Not really. It's all part of the plan. And uh, we had the same questions being asked when Putin came with this uh, election result uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago with 87 percent. We heard the word emboldened. Would this actually change his plans? No, of course not, because the election result is is predetermined. So, yes, this will be used to achieve whatever it is that the Kremlin wants to achieve. Mm. Uh, there are still a lot of questions because this is Russia over exactly who it was that stood behind the attacks. There are so many unexplained circumstances that point to either state collusion by the Russian security services or massive incompetence on an absolutely systemic level. And of course, because this is Russia, it sounds ludicrous if you would say it about any other country, but this is all par for the course. And so is that the context in which we should see the, the calls by some, uh, some officials for the death penalty for terrorism? Is it about, I don't know, riding that wave of public anger? There will be enormous, enormously strong feeling after the attack, won't there? Well, there's riding the wave of public anger, and there's also whipping up more public anger. They, it, the propagandists are trying to, again, stir up this fervor. And it's not just the death penalty. They're calling for, for people to be uh, burned at the stake in Red Square. Uh, this is just a symptom of how we are dealing, really, with a medieval society and a medieval state. That's a word that used to be used about Islamic State when we saw their, their activities, what they got up to in Iraq, Syria, and so on. But what you have here is a terrorist attack on a terrorist country and a terrorist society which is responding in kind. This is the reason why the, the Russian security forces haven't been concealing the torture of the, the supposed suspects. They've actually been uh, posting it on social media to show everybody just how barbarically they're being treated. Yes, I mean you use the 
uh, the, the the comparison of a medieval display. That is how we should see those those pictures of of terrorists being being questioned with electrodes attached to them. Just sort of you know, well, ugly to watch. Terror terror techniques and and torture. Absolutely right, but it is it is standard procedure. If you saw the pictures of them being wheeled into the the courtroom, literally wheeled into the courtroom, unconscious in one case, uh, one person with an ear missing. We saw the the Russian security forces post footage how they sliced it off when detaining him and shoved it in his mouth. Another with an eye missing. One with the plastic bag still round his neck, which we hear from Sean Pinner, the uh, the British citizen who has been through these torture techniques when captured in Ukraine, is a standard method of not only moving people from one place to another plastic bag over the head, but also turning on and off the torture whenever you can. It's just Russia's standard practice. And would you expect then I don't know, the the formalization of the use of the death penalty for, for terrorists? Is that just not the logical extension of this this uh, this this travel, this journey? Potentially. But then, of course, when you use the lo word logical about uh, what Russia is doing, you always have to take it with a certain pinch of salt. This doesn't necessarily mean that the law will be amended, but then the law has always been flexible for what the Russian authorities actually want to do. Certainly, it's giving the excuse for a crackdown on a whole range of people whom Russia traditionally doesn't like. But it's also, of course, spurring calls for revenge from Islamic State. We've already seen the threats that there will be further terror attacks as a response to what has been done to these people who may or may not have had anything to do with this attack. And of course, what it has shown is that Russia is wide open for this kind of terror attack. There seem to be no protection in place for, for large concert venues like Croker City Hall, despite the fact that there was a police station actually inside the building complex. Keir Giles at Chatham House, really interesting to get your thoughts. Thank you.